The last part was quite heavy because we were implementing the core game logic. Fortunately, this part is quite a bit easier because all we want to do is update the text views at the bottom of the screen to show the progress in the game. Let's start with the text view showing the number of pairs found. So right here, we are capturing the return value of memorygame.flipcard, and if that returns true, the user has successfully found a pair of matching memory cards. And so in that case, we would like to reference that text view, which is TV num pairs, and set the text attribute to show this higher number of pairs found. So let's say memorygame.num pairs found, and this is a value out of the total number of pairs which is board size dot get num pairs. And here also we can do one additional check. If the match is found, then there's a potential that the user has also won the game. And so we're gonna check that. So if memory game dot have one game, then in that case, we just wanna show a message to the user. You won, congratulations. One quick correction from before, if the user has made an invalid move by tapping on a card which is already face up, I want to make the snack bar length short instead of long. The second text view in the bottom is for the number of moves the user has made. If the user has gotten past the first two error checks, the user has made a valid card flip. And so right here, we want to update the text view showing how many moves the user has made. Memory game dot get num moves. This method doesn't exist yet on the memory game class, so Inner Studio can help us to create it. And this is going to return an int of how many moves the user has made. So the logic here is that as soon as I flip one card over, I haven't actually completed my move yet. My turn in the game, or my move, is only over after I flipped over two cards. So the number of moves will be half the number of card flips. So we're going to define one more member variable or property on the class called num card flips. This property will be private because we don't need to expose this information outside of the memory game class, and a var because the number of card flips will change as the game is being played. We'll set it equal to zero initially because in a new game, there are no cards flipped yet, and we'll increment this num card flips variable every time we get into the flip card method because we know at that point we have a valid card flip. Now we simply use this value to compute the number of moves, and we'll just do num card flips divided by two. And notice here that we are going to be doing integer truncation. So if the number of card flips is five, when we divide by two, the result of that will be two because we're rounding down. And that makes sense because when I've made five card flips, I'm in the middle of my third move. I haven't yet completed it. And so we still want to show number of moves being two. Let's try it. So now as we play our game, we should see both of these numbers go up. Okay, so I made two card flips and then this makes sense, now I've made one move. Okay, so now I made two moves because I flipped over four cards total and I got lucky with this last one and I found a pair. So you can see how this also got incremented. Let's keep going. Awesome, so now we see the snack bar U1 and the total number of moves is reflected properly along with the number of pairs. The last thing I want to do in this segment is I would like to actually add in color interpolation on the number of pairs. And this is a nice visual way for the user to know using a color their progress in the game. So every time we increment the number of pairs, we want to also update the color of the text view. We'll say TV num pairs dot set text color. And we're going to pass in a color here. And this color is going to be the result of interpolation. So interpolation is a fancy statistical term, but it's actually quite simple. If I tell you that I'm walking a thousand steps and I'm 75% done, then you would probably tell me I should roughly have taken 750 steps. And what you're doing in your head is linear interpolation. At the starting point, I've done zero steps. At the ending point, I've done a thousand steps. And so when I say I've done 75% progress, you are estimating that I should be roughly 750 steps into that journey. We're doing something identical here. We're going to use a built-in class in Android called ARGB Evaluator, which will take in the worst color, meaning no progress has been made, zero pairs have been found, and another color representing full progress has been made, which means the user has won the game and all the pairs have been found. And all we need to do then is provide progress of how many pairs have been found so far in the game. 
And based on that, we will do interpolation between the worst color and best color. And this is possible because, like we talked about earlier, colors are simply integer values behind the scenes. So here's how we can compute the fraction of what progress has been made so far. The number of pairs found divided by the total number of pairs. And the issue here is that it expects a float rather than an int. Um, so we're going to cast the numerator as a float. The second and third parameter are the start and end value, representing no progress made and complete progress made. And so we're going to use context compat to get the color, and then we're going to have to actually define the colored resource in our colors.xml file. I'll call the color resources color progress none and color progress full. So now we will create the color value resource. And what I put in here is this red color, because red kind of indicates to me that you've made no progress, you're stopped. So that's the worst value. And then for color progress full, I am using this green value, which means that you've made it. Green means go, so you've you've made a lot of progress and you've won the game. Awesome. And then this set text color requires an integer, and so we're going to now cast the value of this ARGB evaluator as an int. Let's try it. As I make progress in this eight memory card game, there are four pairs. Each time I should be 25% closer to hitting that green value. So after one pair, you can see the color changing a little bit. And now you can see the full green color at the very end when I've won the game. One thing you'll notice is that at the very beginning of the game, we should see the color of that text view be red to indicate no progress, but right now it's that default black color. So let's fix that. Inside of the onCreate method, after we've defined TV numpairs, let's set the text color of that text view to initially be the color representing no progress, color progress none, which is that red color. And if we try it, we can see that the text view color is indeed red. At this point, we're able to play a fully functional memory game along with having information at the bottom showing how the game is going. The goal for the next segment is to give the user some control to restart the game and also allow the user to control what size memory board they're playing with, easy, medium, or hard. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. See you all soon.